people, welcome to the Circuit Rider website, to the Bible Studies portion, and uh, we're going to look at what is true worship. Now, uh, I've been meditating on Psalms 50, and it's a very interesting passage, and I encourage you maybe to read the whole chapter at your own convenience, but there's a couple of things I want to point out. First of all, in verses 7 through 13, God says about the people of Israel, He says, uh, I'm not going to reprove, reprove you for your sacrifices because God was the one that established them. But he said, you know, they were doing all the sacrificing of lambs and goats and all these things. Uh, and But God says to him, he says, you know, if I was hungry, I wouldn't ask you. You know, I own the cattle on a thousand hills. And the reason he says that is because they had lost the, um, the idea of what those sacrifices represented and they were going through the form of worship, they were involved in the activity of worship, but their heart wasn't a part of it. And because of that, God wasn't interested in it. You know, I know that, um, how many times have you done things, or maybe within a marriage relationship, where um, you're communicating and talking, and your wife or your husband knows you're saying all the right words, but your heart's not there, your devotion isn't there. Well, in the same way, God says a lot of times about the church, you know, you're doing all the right things. You are um, involved in the activity, but your heart's somewhere else. Your, your mind, your thoughts. I know sometimes with Rebecca, she'll be, my wife, she'll be sharing with me. And I'm looking at her, and, you know, she has my, my focus, at least outwardly, but then she'll say, you didn't hear a word I said. <laughs> and a lot of times it's because my attention is somewhere else. And so what this psalm talks about is the worship that God receives and also the worship that God does not receive, that He does not accept. And one of the, past, one of the things He says, He says, uh, you know, but unto the wicked, God says, what right have you to take my covenant within your mouth? And He says, seeing thou hatest instruction, and so one of the questions in regard to our worship is in our personal life, do we accept instruction or do we hate instruction? I'll give you a little homework that I think is wonderful to do. If you'll read the Proverbs, and there's 31 Proverbs, which is basically one proverb for every day of the month. And if you'll just take one proverb a day, like today would be the 21st, so you'd read Proverbs 21. But as you read it, get you a little marking pen and mark every time it says the word instruction or reproof or correction and and begin to find out how many times it talks about that and you'll be fine you'll find that very interesting but the scripture says reproof for correction is the way to life if you're going to walk along this journey you've got to be able to receive correction um, there's an old saying that says um, experience is a man's best teacher and that's true but it also goes on to say it's a fool's only teacher and there are things in life that you do not have to experience there are pains that you do not have to walk through if you will be open to correction and instruction in your life um, are you teachable is there anyone in your life right now that can say difficult or hard things to you or have you isolated yourself is there a wall around you? Or do you bring around yourself those that are just yes people? They just say what you want to hear. That's not what true love is. A genuine friend, the scripture says, um, um, will, will reprove or bring correction or speak truth to your life. So one of the things about that worship that God does not receive is from the heart of those who cannot receive instruction. So then the question that I have is why? Why is it hard for us to receive instruction? And a lot of time it's because the father of lies, um, that's what Jesus defined Satan. He said he's the father of lies, there's no truth in him. And right up here is where the battle is always presented, you know, the thoughts of our mind. And one of the lies that this unseen enemy has introduced to all of mankind is we've learned to perceive correction as rejection. You know, the moment I'm corrected, I put up a wall because there's this feeling maybe of failure, of disappointment, and immediately that ties into that 
that rejection that wants to say something to us. But correction is not rejection. Actually, in Hebrews chapter 12, God says correction is actually a, a outward revelation of God's love because He's involved in our life. And so, so quickly, there's another passage in Proverbs that says, Powerful statement. Instruction is thy life. And I, I circled it in red. And I, I want to apply that to my own life. You know, if I will be open to receive correction, now sometimes my neck gets tight just like anybody else. But learning to receive correction is is a part of the characteristic of a true worshiper of God, both from the Word and from others. So another thing that he says is that um, that. It says, um, you've been partakers of adulterers. Now again, remember, he's talking about people who are worshipers of God. They're going through the sacrifices in the form of outward worship. They're going through the ritual, the routine of every day's uh, Sunday service. But he says, you're partakers of adulterers. Now immediately in our mind, we think of uh, maybe outward adultery. But there's something much deeper than that, I think, that God is speaking to. And we find it in the New Testament when, the, when James talks and he says, you adulterers and adulteresses. And he's talking again to the people of God and he says, your heart has departed from God. Again, you're going through the form of worship, but your heart is somewhere else. In the book of Revelations, um, John is writing and he says, he says um, to uh, the church, he said, I know your works. He says, you cannot endure uh, false doctrine. You can't, you know, you expose false teachers. Um, you have patient endurance. You're, you're walking through trials and tribulations. And, and there are so many good things about your life. But he says this, I have this against you, that you've left your first love. You know, you can be hard-pressed on the right doctrine. You can be hard-pressed on making sure that there's no um, wrong teaching. And all that sounds good, and yet you lose the one thing that it's all about, and that's a love relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And God says, return to your first works, to that church. And so I would encourage you today that if you want to be a true worshiper, return to your first works. What was it like? when you first came to know the Lord. You were hungry for the Word. You wanted to go to church. You wanted to be with the fellowship and the people of God. So I encourage you today to be a true worshiper of God. This is the first installment of this message, and, uh, and there will be others to come. But I hope this challenges you to return to your first love and to not fall into that rut of routine and ritual, but grab a hold of the genuine, true relationship Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you.